One of my favorite new features in Final Cut Pro 10.4.4 is the Comparison Viewer, which helps immensely when color grading. It can be used when matching clips shot on different days or in different lighting conditions, matching cameras in a multicam shoot, or matching shots to a reference. Here I have a project that I'm color correcting. I've closed the browser, I have the scopes open and set to the RGB Parade version of the waveform, with a vertical layout selected. My color inspector is open with a color wheels correction selected, and my playhead is parked on the clip I want to correct. Let's say that as I grade, I'd like to compare this clip to the previous clip here. Rather than moving the playhead back and forth, or going to a browser version of the previous clip and using the event viewer, I can now use the comparison viewer. From the window menu, I'll choose Show in Workspace, Comparison Viewer. Note the keyboard shortcut, Control Command 6. The Comparison Viewer opens to the left of the Timeline Viewer. At the top are two tabs, Timeline and Saved. By default, Timeline is selected. At the bottom, Previous Edit is selected, so the last frame of the clip before the playhead is loaded in the Comparison Viewer. By clicking Next Edit, we'll see the first frame of the clip after the clip the playhead is parked on. By the way, if the previous or next clip is a connected clip, it is that clip that appears in the Comparison Viewer. I'll go back to my target clip and make sure I'm set to Previous Edit. The Comparison Viewer has the same sizing and view options as the Timeline Viewer. Let's select the video scopes, select a single view of the waveform, set to the RGB Parade, and then select a vertical layout. I can adjust the height of the scopes to match each other, and I can adjust the relative size of each viewer by dragging on the line between them. Now I can grade my shot while using both the previous shot and the scopes for the previous shot to assist me. Now let's say instead I want to grade this earlier clip to match the clip I'm on right now. I'll move the playhead over it, and in the Comparison Viewer, I'll select Next Edit. This time, the first frame of the next clip is not a good reference because I don't see our talent's helmet that I'd like to match to. If you want to reference a frame that is not the last frame of the previous edit, or the first frame of the next edit, or maybe a frame from a clip elsewhere in your timeline, you can save the frame you want as a reference. I'll move the playhead to the frame on the reference clip where I can see our talent's helmet. At the top of the comparison viewer, I'll select Saved. At the bottom of the window, I'll click the Save Frame button. The frame loads, and when I return to the clip I want to grade, it remains in the Saved tab, so I can now refer to it while grading. You can save as many frames as you like. I'll navigate to a few other clips I may want to use as references and save each of them. Now at the bottom left of the Comparison Viewer, I'll click the Frame Browser button. A floating window opens where I can see and select all of my saved frames. While this window is open, I can save more frames by clicking the plus button. You can even save frames from clips in the browser. I'll open the browser, and let's say this is a clip my client has provided for how they want the show to look. I'll save it to the frame browser, and then close the browser. Saved frames are available for all projects in the current library. To delete a saved frame, just select it and press the delete key. I found it very useful to assign some keyboard shortcuts to speed up the process of working with a comparison viewer. I'll close the Frame Browser and switch back to the Timeline tab in the Comparison Viewer. Then I'll select Fonica Pro, Commands, Customize. Note that I have the default command set selected. I'll type Comparison in the search field. Notice there are four different commands related to the Comparison Viewer, and only one has a keyboard shortcut by default, the one that toggles it on and off. From the Command Set pop-up menu, I'll select my Color Correction command set that I've created. In this set, you can see I've assigned keyboard shortcuts for the other three commands. 
Go to Comparison Viewer, which makes it the active window, is Option Shift Command 3. I chose this shortcut because the default command to go to the Timeline Viewer is Command 3. Save Frame is Shift Command F, F for Frame. And switching focus between the Comparison Viewer and the Timeline Viewer is Shift Command C, C for Comparison Viewer. You can, of course, assign any available keyboard shortcuts you prefer. Let's try them out. I'll close the command editor. If I use the default Control Command 6 shortcut, I can hide and show the comparison viewer. If I press Shift Command C, I toggle focus between each viewer. Notice the thin horizontal blue bar at the top that indicates the active window. For example, when the Timeline Viewer is active, and I press Command plus or minus, or Shift Z, I'm resizing that viewer. And when the Comparison Viewer is active, those same keyboard shortcuts, Command plus or minus and Shift Z, affect that window. And if the Timeline is the active window, I can go there with Command 2. Notice the blue line. I can then use Shift Option Command 3 to make the Comparison Viewer active. But the most useful shortcut, in my opinion, is for saving a frame. If I navigate to a frame I want to save, and I'm in the Timeline tab of the Comparison Viewer, ordinarily, I would need to click the Saved tab and then click the Save Frame button. But now, let's go back to the Timeline tab and click back in the Timeline. All I need to do is press Shift-Command-F, and my frame is saved, and the Comparison Viewer switches to the Save tab automatically. While I love this new feature, there are a few things I'd like to see added in a future update. One is the ability to open the Frame Browser with a keyboard shortcut. Then, in the Frame Browser, I'd love the ability to reorganize my saved frames, to copy a correction from a saved frame, and to be able to jump to that saved frame in the project. But overall, it's a great new feature that's certainly going to speed up my grading workflow in Final Cut Pro 10.